For there are certain men crept in unawares, who were before of old ordained to this condemnation, ungodly men, turning the grace of our God into lasciviousness, and denying the only Lord God and our Lord Jesus Christ. Speaking of diversity, you know, New York City, one thing that is polarizing to some communities, especially within religion, is homosexuality and the debate around it. I mean, how do you balance those two things? I mean, are people of all sexual orientations welcome, and, and how do you see that? Absolutely. I think what I was referring to there was, you know, some people would be like, you need to make bet, you, you need to answer our questions about the homosexuality issue. And I always say, I do, you just don't like my answers. And here's exactly what I mean by that. Mm -hmm. the, some media wants us to use our pulpit to uh, have a soapbox for social issues. I don't believe that's our job. I don't believe Jesus did that. I don't believe Jesus did that. go look at what Jesus did. He was always talking about the heart of an individual and the soul of a person, not these symptomatic societal problems. And people hate that because a lot of churches are about what they're against. We're about what we're for. Because a lot of churches are about what they're against. We're about what we're for. And when it comes to people's sexuality, I don't want to use a public forum to talk about private things because how in the world can you have a dialogue? How in the world can I hear your story? How in the world can someone have a question? So if I, if I stand up in a pulpit and I just start railing at something or make a statement in, in a newspaper about something, I, I believe it's insensitive to the journey that people are walking yeah. on and our church is going to protect people no matter where you're from, no matter what you carry, no matter what kind of um, orientation you feel like is your um, you know, lane of life to run in, um, no matter what you carry, no matter what kind of um, orientation you feel like is your, um, you know, lane of life to run in. Matthew, chapter 6, is a set-up prayer. Jesus was setting people up. Church in the wild. And there's this phrase, I'm going to read it from the message, it's not a direct translation, it's a paraphrase. And there's this phrase, I'm going to read it from the message, it's not a direct translation, it's a paraphrase. But it's good, it makes a lot of sense. Here's what he said. Our Father in heaven, reveal who you are. Set the world right. Do what's best. As above, so below. As above, so below. As above, so below. But the fearful, and unbelieving, and the abominable, and murderers, and whoremongers, and sorcerers, and idolaters, and all liars, shall have their part in the lake which burneth with fire and brimstone, which is the second death. 
the church into false doctrine. And you listen to me, every one of you prosperity preachers. Jesus Christ did not die on a cross. He did not take the stripes on his back. He did not take a crown on his head. His side was not pierced. That we may drive Rolls Royces and buy $12,000 dogs and live in $40 million homes, but he died on a cross to save mankind from the power of sin and the grip of darkness. And shame on you! Shame on you! Shame on you! Man's problem is not what kind of suit he wears or what kind of house he lives in or what kind of house he drives or car he drives. Man's problem is sin and man needs a savior and that savior is Jesus Christ. There must be a reformation of the cross. There must be a reformation of the cross. Oh, you're not getting it. I said there must be a reformation of the cross. The church must come back for God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son. The church must have a reformation of Christ and him crucified. I'm angry. I'm mad. I'm tired of God's people being fleeced. We, listen, you better hang on and buckle your seatbelt. We don't need any more prosperity pimps leading the church into spiritual idolatry. We don't need any more prosperity pimps leading the church down a primrose path of destruction. We don't need any more snake oil salesmen. We need men of God who will stand behind a pulpit and preach the gospel. I'm going to say it again. If you're preaching that lie of the greed, you are a prosperity pimp. I said, if your gospel is the gospel of greed, you're a prosperity pimp. And you're going to stand before God and give an account for every single message that you preach on that. Souls are dying and going to hell and you're prostituting the word of God. Men are bound by alcohol and you're prostituting the word of God. Homosexuals bound and dying in their sins and you're prostituting the gospel of Jesus Christ. Pimps. Let me tell you what's going on. And let me tell you what's going to happen. Jesus says, when he walked into the temple, my house shall be called a house of prayer, but you have made it a den of thieves. You are thieves. And I remind you what happened. He cleaned the place out. And he's going to clean the place out again. Your day is numbered. Your day is numbered. Your day is numbered. He's about ready to turn over those tables. He's about ready to throw you out. My house shall be called a house of prayer. Where people can get saved, not have success seminars. I'm sick and tired of preachers 
say we don't want Haymark Christians in this church. They won't. They don't want you, but Jesus wants you. I don't care if you ain't got shoes on your feet. Jesus wants you. I don't care if you ain't got two dollars to see your ass. Jesus wants you. I don't care if you don't know where your next meal is coming from. Jesus wants you. Tonight, tonight are the preachers that will stand up and take a stand. Where are we? We need Jeremiah's. We need some Daniels. We need some Isaiah's. We need some Jehoshaphat's. We need some David's. We need some Hezekiah's that says, I'm sick and tired of a dirty temple. It's time to clean it up. False Christs and the Antichrist an interpretation of the New Testament of the Holy Bible. Messiah Jesus warned his followers, false Christs and false prophets will arise. From its earliest days, the worldwide messianic movement has been assailed by purveyors of false religion. The New Testament books, originally written in Greek, expose eight kinds of religious falsehood, employing the prefix pseudos, a lie, falsehood. 1. False brother, Sude Delphos, one who misrepresents associate status in a closely knit group, false, counterfeit, bogus brother, member. 2. False Apostle, Pseudapostolos, one who makes false claim to having divine credentials for the work of an apostle. False, bogus apostle. 3. False Teacher, Siasodidaskalos, one who claims the post of a teacher but without divine credentials. False, bogus teacher. 4. False message, pseudologos, giving out false information or misrepresenting information. Lying. Liars. 5. False witness, pseudomartis, one who testifies contrary to the facts. A false witness. 6. False prophet, pseudo-prophets, one who falsely claims to have divine credentials for service as a prophet, with or without implication of offering incorrect information. False, bogus prophet. False prophets found new religions. Seven. Falsely termed knowledge, having a misnomer, falsely termed, miscalled. 8. False Messiah, Pseudo-Christos, one who makes false claim to being Israel's anointed one, Messiah. Bogus Messiah. 
The Apostle John reminded Asian churches, as you have heard that Antichrist is coming, so now many Antichrists have come. Only John's epistles employ the title Antichrist. The prefix anti does not mean against but instead of. In place of. Thus an Antichrist is one who falsely comes in the place of Israel's anointed Messiah, or who claims to hold Messiah's office on earth. In John's day, the end times Antichrist had not yet appeared, although there were many Antichrists. Antichrists include those who Deny that the human Jesus also be the Messiah. Deny that Jesus be the Son of God the Father. Deny that Messiah Jesus was fully human. The end times Antichrist has other titles as well. Jesus called him the abomination of desolation spoken of by the prophet Daniel. Paul titled him the man of lawlessness and the son of destruction. John described him as a beast, a miracle-working conqueror whom Jesus will destroy when he returns. Jesus is the true Messiah, the Son of God, crucified and risen, who alone forgives sins and grants eternal life to all who obey him.